Number eight. Suppose a 50 turn coil lies in the plane of the page in a uniform magnetic field that is directed into the page. The coil originally has an area of 0.25 meters squared. It is stretched to have no area in 0.1 seconds. What is the direction and magnitude of the induced EMF if the uniform magnetic field strength has uh, a strength, uh, a uniform magnetic field, sorry, has a strength of uh, 1.5 Tesla? Okay, so we have a particular loop. And it says that there is a uniform magnetic field directed into the page, right? So uh, what we will show, we'll show some X's, right? And what's important is the magnetic field that is inside the loop, okay? All right. So uh, the question is now saying that the it wants us to calculate uh, what is the direction and magnitude of the induced EMF. So over here in this formula, this represents induced EMF, okay? So you can label this EMF with a little I for induced if you want is equal to negative N, which represents the number of turns, multiplied by the changing magnetic field, excuse me, the changing magnetic flux, divided by the change in time. So they tell us the time, right? The, how much the time change. It started at zero, and I, they didn't say that, but it's assumed, and it went to 0 0.1 seconds. So we know the change in time. The change in magnetic flux, right, is going to be a function now of the change in area, because they told us that the area is changing. So in other words, that here's the formula for magnetic flux, and therefore the change in magnetic flux, I don't know why that's a Q, the change in magnetic flux could then be equal to the change in the magnetic field. Now the magnetic field isn't changing, all right? So that's not the thing that's changing, but what's changing is the area in this problem. So it's based on the change in area, okay? Multiplied by then the cosine of the angle. So what we're gonna do, EMF induced is equal to negative N. So let's plug that in, so it's the B times the change in area, multiplied then by the cosine of that angle, okay? Divided by then the change in time. So now what we have to do is just simply calculate, all right? So it tells us the number of turns, it said 50, right? Uh, the magnetic field then, it told us it was 1.5. That's not changing, that's the external field, no problem. The area is changing. Started at 0 0.250, it went to then zero. Right, so it's final minus initial, so 0 minus 0 0.25. Multiply them by the cosine of the angle between the, the normal of the area, and what's the normal of the area when there is no area, I'm not really sure, but let's just assume it's still 0. Cosine of 0 is the maximum, it means that cosine of 0 is 1. So that's not really going to affect the calculation, then divided by 0.1. All right, so EMF is going to be equal to negative 50 times then 1.5 times negative 0.25 divided by 0.1. So it's 187.5, 187.5. Yep, that looks good. I guess maybe, yeah, I guess 188 or so, right? 188, and the induced EMF now is going to be in terms of volts, because that is what EMF is measured in. All right, so that's now the uh, magnitude, and then we have to think now about uh, what's the direction all right, of the induced uh, EMF. So I guess it's still going to maintain a circle, circular shape. I don't, I don't really know. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but if it has no area, what shape is it? I don't, I don't know. Um, so uh, what we, what we need to do, so I'm just going to assume it's still like a circle. Anyway, uh, if it has no area, it must be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then what that means is that the, essentially the magnetic flux that's going through the wire is decreasing, right? Because there's less and less area. Uh, therefore, there will be a current that will serve to oppose that change, okay? So as this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, there's like less X's, you know, inside. So what that means is that there's gonna be more X's being produced, all right, to counteract that change. And if more X's are then produced, right? If you think about now we have this smaller wire, uh, the question then becomes, in what direction should the current be flowing in this uh, blue wire in order for that to happen? So it should be going in the uh, clockwise direction, if you use right-hand rule number two, okay, clockwise. All right, hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Check out some more of our videos, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.